Hi, today I'm reviewing the Trig Key N150 mini PC with the Intel processor. And it has like dual NIC and dual uh, HDMI at 4K. So why am I reviewing this mini PC? Well, I wanted to review mini PC for a while, but we need to rewind a little bit. Ingenious sent me their Wi-Fi 7 access point but it led me to a rabbit hole. An access point will give you Wi-Fi, but for wired connection and routing, you will need a gateway, so you will need something else. Now, the easiest and lazy way would have to just use my uh, TP-Link AX3000 router and just disactivate Wi-Fi and just use it as an Ethernet um, wired connection router but it doesn't solve my main issue with uh, networking gear at the consumer level. It's the lack of security update after a year or two, leaving millions of devices with potentially security flaws in them. Now, solution number two would have been to install OpenWRT on my router, but this one is not compatible with it. I could have traded for an older router that I know is compatible, the AC2600 from TP-Link also, that a friend has. And when I tried OpenWRT uh, before, my main issue was the Wi-Fi performance versus the stock firmware. But because I have an access point here, it wouldn't be really uh, an, a problem here. But on a rainy day, when transit was down, which happened more often than you would expect in a giant city, uh, two friends that are a network engineer with like each 15 years of experience stopped by maybe like six months or a year ago. And we had the discussion about like my, that issue that I had with consumer level device and how would they redo the Wi-Fi in the loft setting where I am right now. And basically what they were mentioning is that you should put PFSense the, the open source uh, router software on a wired device and then just have an access point to do your Wi-Fi. This way you would have uh, constant updating and you would have an enterprise level solution. And I thought it would be a really good idea. And they were saying you want each network segment to be isolated by a different device anyways. So it would be a good practice to having a, something to do your firewall, then something maybe to do your wired connection, and then something to do your Wi-Fi. So this way, if one has like security update issues, well, it's not necessarily taking your all your network in one shot because it's not like your like your ISP device doing routing, Wi-Fi, and wired at the same time. So I start looking at uh, PFSense device on AliExpress. You could find for 150 to 200 Canadians, like a uh, device with four ports that are 2.5 gigahertz for the networking. So that seems a good idea. But uh, the issue is that when I talked to a ghost through you know, the processor way more than me, was like, yeah, that N2830 is like ancient, maybe for around like 2014. And it doesn't support AES-NE, so new instruction. So PSNS wouldn't be able to support the latest version of it. So then we started to look around for a mini PC. He ended up finding one on Amazon that is the one that I'm talking about today. For 208 Canadian, uh, this is the Trade Key N150. Uh, you can see in front that you have the USB port there and you have plenty of IO at the back. But what was important for me was the dual NIC. I'll talk about that a little later. Now, what was interesting about the N50 is that it's a modern processor in the sense that it's been released in 2025, so this year in January, but it's using the 12th gen uh, efficient core from uh, Intel, four of them and four thread to basically like make a small uh, CPU that is way more modern than a lot of them that you find on AliExpress device. Now there's the N300 that has 8 core and 8 threads, 
but it's of course more expensive. So what's the plan then? Well, the plan is that after I review this mini PC, why not review it if I buy it, right? I'll install PFSense on it. Then I'm gonna use my eight port uh, Netgear switch. Yes, it's only one gig each port, but like the issue is that my, uh, because I don't have fiber in the building, even if my connection is 1.5 gigs, uh, I'm kind of limited at maybe 950 Mbps max. So after I put a port straight to the, uh, the switch, then I will plug the ingenious access point to it. Then it should give me a very modern solution with enterprise level security and management. So that should be fun. But then the question came like, why am I not reviewing the mini PC anyways if I have it before doing all of that? So this is what we're doing today in this video. Let's do a quick unboxing first uh, to see what we get in the box. We can see here that it's the N150 processor with 16 gig of RAM and a 500 gig SSD. You have an instruction card for the jumper if you want the PC to be fully off and not wake when you sleep. You get the HDMI cable and a power cable uh, in the box. The power supply is built in, in the unit, which I really love for something that size. As you can see here, you have the unit in the box. The unit is uh, really small. You have vent on both sides of the unit and probably an exhaust on top. You can see the back of the unit here with more air intake. It's a little lift from the ground uh, using the rubber feet. In front, you have the power button, a headphone jack, a USB 3.2 at 10 gig and one USB at 480 uh, Mbps in front. At the back, you have two more USB-C, the power plug, the dual NIC, and the dual HDMI. So you have plenty of I.O., but we're missing a USB-C here, which I think would have been useful. For size comparison here, you have my AirPod Pro case and a SD card. So you can see the unit is really tiny and it seems quite well built. I decided to open it to see what you had inside and uh, it's great. You can remove the memories. You have a SATA NVMe, but you also have a NVMe PCI Express and a Wi-Fi card and everything is removable. So it's give you option to upgrade if you want to upgrade to DDR5 uh, or put an NVMe in it. When you power on, you get the traditional Windows 11 setup. Nothing is really different here. I also find interesting that you have a feature rich BIOS. So you can play quite a bit uh, with the setting if you go to advanced. And I enjoy that like, I don't feel that they remove most of the BIOS settings so the user cannot access them. I also like that the Windows install seem uh, quite basic. You don't see any bloatware like McAfee there. And it seems a pretty clean Windows install, which I appreciate. The unit is so quiet also. We can see the spec of the PC here. Uh, we have a full install uh, activated of Windows 11 Pro, which I appreciate. It's also the same drivers. It's also using the modern ARC drivers. The main issue I had with the unit is the high CPU usage. Uh, even when I check if there's no service like Windows Update running in the background, you will often be stuck at 100% usage. You just click on a web page and it stay at 100. Or sometime like after 10 minutes, it would just stay constantly at 100%. And when I look at the process, nothing jump out. So I decided to run Geekbench 6 next. We get 1171 in single core and 2571 in multi-core. We get 4219 for OpenCL score. 
and 49.55 for the Vulcan score. For Crystal Disk Mark, we see that we are at 536 M meg by second, which is not surprising because it's a SSD, but not a NVMe SSD. I decided to do OCCT after, and we can see that we're in the 50s for the temperature, the CPU running at max, and we don't hear the mini PC. So it stay cool and quiet. I tried to run Cinebench R34, but for the uh, graphic card uh, benchmark, it's the same issue with the Intel B580. It's not supported. 3D mark still nomad. Light only gave us 2.27 frame by second, and we can see that it was struggling a lot there. And then run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the lowest graphical benchmark but I was getting an FPS of 10. Then I then decided to run Cyberpunk Benchmark, but at the Steam Deck settings, and we were getting a 10 FPS. I tried even at the lowest setting and get up to 12 FPS, but the game was not really playable. I could get a game like 80s at 1080p to, or 720p to get to 60 FPS, so I think you can do light gaming on it. But anything else, you would need a beefier CPU and GPU combo. I did a quick uh, network test uh, using a wired connection, and I got to around 900 Mbps. It also took 51 minutes to render my R36S video. Something I could do in 11 minutes on M1 MacBook Air with only 8 gig of RAM, or 25 minutes on my Aero GLI. So what do I think of the Trig Key uh, N50 mini PC? Well, I think there's a lot to like there. You have like, like I mentioned, a lot of IOs on it. It's a modern CPU. The build quality is great and it's very silent. Even when I'm trying like running OCTT or Furmark, I don't hear the, uh, the fan going. Uh, the device I use to measure like the sound level stay at 30, which is the minimum it can record. So it's a very uh, silent solution. You get a modern CPU with feature like QuickSync, uh, AES uh, NE, which I will need for PFSense. On the hardware level, you get 16 gig of DDR4 at 3200. So you get plenty of RAM and RAM usage was really not an issue when I used the device. Then you have a 512 uh, SSD drive. Uh, it uses a SATA and VME, but you also have a slot for a PCI Express and VME that you can add. So that's one a good way to upgrade it there. You get two port uh, for the HDMI at 4K. I'm assuming it's HDMI 2.0, but in the spec, I didn't find it. But so for supporting dual monitor, uh, it should be super easy to set up. You get the dual NIC at uh, one gig, like I mentioned, that was the most important feature for me. And the fact that it was on Amazon, it's been okay, I can return it if there's an issue versus waiting a, a long time for AliExpress to get the device. And like I said, I paid 208 before tax, but now it's on sale at 191. So it seemed that like it would be a, a good deal for that. And also that like you get Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5, but when I look, it's a PCIe Express card uh, that you could remove if you want to switch to Wi-Fi 6 uh, or 7, if you have like a small card that you can plug. So it's not glued to the motherboard, so you can upgrade it if you want. I think it's really well designed. Now, of course, not everything is perfect. I think the biggest issue for me is the CPU usage. I didn't expect that like sometimes uh, I make sure that it was not a Windows update running in the background or things like that. Uh, it will often spike and stay at 100% of usage of CPU. And then even if it would get like lower to, I don't know, 50, it would like, as soon as I click on a web page for a couple of seconds, get to 100 and get back. So I feel that the little CPU is maybe like struggling with Windows 11 Pro. On the positive, you get the Windows 11 Pro license, but I don't necessarily think that like the OS, uh, the CPU is can keep up with that uh, modern OS with all the telemetry and things like that. Even if I try 
to remove some of it. And also, uh, I tried to, uh, you know, turn off telemetry and some scripting. The Windows install is pretty clean, though. I didn't see a bunch of software like McAfee install. And I appreciate that it's activated and that you have a real license for it, for the $200. But I, I was kind of curious if I could use that mini PC and replace my that PC that he has now, which is my old Ryzen 2600 with the same uh, uh, memory at 16 gig and 3200. And the difference is that, yeah, I feel the tiny CPU struggle, but it would be fine for just, you know, basic web surfing. And the footprint of that mini PC is so tiny versus like even the micro ATX tower that I installed there. So I still think that someone that just want a basic PC that is not a Chromebook and want to run Windows would be fine with it. But if you want a game or like, even like when I would unzip to install, let's say, uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is 3 gig, it would take sometimes 15 seconds to see the interface of uh, uh, 7-zip to get in. So now I'm curious if I put uh, choose a DDR5 at 4800 and I put the NVMe if it would be better. But I don't, think, I don't think for the usage I have in mind, it will make a big difference. Another thing I kind of wish is that there would be a USB-C port. So this way I could just plug it to the KVM in my monitor and have keyboard and mouse uh, directly and display and not have to plug it, uh, each device straight in the mini PC. But at the same time, it's like, it's such like a low complaint because there's plenty of I.O. It's just that in 2025, and not having USB-C could be issue as an issue. But the thing is, is that that's not the main usage that I want to do with that mini PC being Windows, right? I just want to use it as my wired router, plug it on my network switch. And I think for that, it will be way more that adequate. And the spec will be way better than those tiny uh, PF Sense router that you see on AliExpress. Thanks for watching.